Today, we review Polonia. Welcome back to the block space. Today, I want to take a closer look at the Poloniex Cryptocurrency Exchange, an exchange that I hold near and dear to my heart. Despite its shortcomings and customer support to value-added features like trading competitions, Poloniex is still unique for its history, simplistic UI, and margin options. So let's get into it. Poloniex was originally founded by the semi-anonymous crypto figure called Tristan da Costa. Kind of something similar to Satoshi Nakamoto, but not at the level of Satoshi Nakamoto. So, who the fuck is Tristan de Agusta? When you try to look this guy up, there's nothing you can find. But from what we're able to find on the net is that Tristan Agusta was a musical student straight out of Rutgers University. After college, he was trying to produce film, theater, and orchestral soundtracks. On May 12, 2010, the Who's His website detected a new domain. The domain was called tristendeagusta.com and it was registered under NetEarth1. We can take it a step further and look at the Wayback Machine to look at what this website used to look like. And upon landing on the website, you find this handsome young gentleman posed like this. And he appeared to be a versatile composer for film, concert, and opera stuff. Unfortunately, you can't really listen to those pieces. If you find a place on the net where you can listen to it, please share it with me. I'd like to listen to some of his creativity. Shortly after this venture, he decided to create another website called PoloniusSheetMusic.com. So Polonius Sheet Music looked like it was a business venture for him to sell sheet music. How surprising. And then shortly afterwards, he became a crypto god and created the Poloniex Exchange. He's even now listed under Forbes 40 under 40. Now there are other people involved in the Poloniex Exchange or the creation of the Poloniex Exchange. And their names are Julie Kim and Michael Demowop. Sorry if I butcher your name, Demopolis. But I don't want to speculate too much into their details because I cannot find anything. So what does Poloniex stand for? Polonius is actually a character straight out of Shakespeare's play, Hamlet. To be or not to be. And I'm not going to tell you all the details about Hamlet. You could do that research on your own, but I'll give you a little overview. So this dude Hamlet thinks that King Cloud has killed his father, King Hamlet, to get together with his mom Virtue. Eight in his life, Hamlet throws a tantrum at his girlfriend, and then he yells at his mom Virtue, and then he kills Polonia. He leaves his daughter behind Polonia, who drowns himself. Hamlet called the Eartie to challenge Hamlet, who will duel and then dies. Claudius offers some shitty wine. Virtue drinks the wine, and dies. Hamlet kills Claudius, and Hamlet takes the shit of his life to death. Death! So what significance does this have to do with the Polonius Exchange? The following quote might have something to do with it. This quote occurs when Latiris is about to go out on a venture for himself and his dad gives him some piece of advice. Hamlet Act 1, Scene 3, 75-77 Neither a borrower nor a lender be. For loan oft losses both itself and friend and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. I mean, it's a little interesting because the Poloniex Exchange is pretty unique for its margin borrowing and margin lending options. More on Shakespeare's Hamlet later, so stay tuned to the end of the video. For you crypto veterans out there, I know you as much as I miss the troll box. The troll box was unique for its tenacity for pump and dump schemes. I mean, you could even predict when something was going to pump and dump. Not that I recommend this way to speculate. But unfortunately on April 7th, 2017, because of the overwhelming demand and customer support and the outpouring of people wanting to enter the space, you had to f***ing ruin it. Poloniex decided to pull back the troll box support and have them focus on customer support. So for example, this is generally the way they went down. Yo, y'all heard about that new down coin? Yeah, bruh, check it out. I got this friend that works for the Apple Core development team, and he says that tomorrow they're gonna make an announcement that they've partnered up with Downcoin, bro. Shit, man. I was heard that it's a version of Satoshi's vision to become the ultimate currency of the entire world. Yeah, bro, so you better jump on the Downcoin train before it takes off to the moon. Buy it now while it's cheap. Fuck you, Chewbacca. I say what I want. In here, I'm God, McLovin. Anyway, my hope is that someday the troll box comes back because I love that shit. It was a really wonderful place. All right, so what happened in 2018? On February 26, 2018, there was an announcement by Circle that they had acquired Poloniex and there was this supposed insider that said that they had acquired him for 400 million. This also means that we've gotten new marketing updates, new email templates, and a new landing page and a couple other little nice UI updates and even the most important one is the new mobile update. It was a huge overhaul needed to keep up with the new more modernized exchanges that offered pretty good apps already. But what interested me the most is what Circle had to say about their plans for Poloniex. And they say, 
We envision a robust, multi-sided distribution marketplace that can also focus on everything about physical goods, fundraising, and real estate, creative productions, such as art, music, and literature, service leases, and time-based rentals, credit, futures, and more. Now, to me, that sounds like Circle has big plans for the future, and I'm really excited to see if they actually come through on it. So how safe is Poloniex? There's a lot of fear on the net about how safe Poloniex is, and I would understand that in 2014. Back then, it was a little bit harder to distinguish which sites were legit and which ones weren't. So, is it a scam? What's so, 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 Hell no. I mean, don't forget, Circle just acquired them. And they're really prone to wanting to get it regulated well enough so they can make some money off of it. Am I wrong? We've got to have money. So if you do think Poloniex is a scam, be a good Satoshi and bring your funds back into your wallet. Okay, so what hacks have occurred to the Poloniex exchange? The one notable hack of the Poloniex exchange happened on March 4th, 2014. And what this hack targeted was a rapid amount of withdrawals within a short period of time and it essentially made customers' accounts go negative. So shortly after hearing about this hack, the Agosta decided to freeze the exchange temporarily and opened it back up on the 5th. What he did between the 4th and the 5th was update the Damien to fix the hack. Now, how much did they lose in this hack? It was approximately 12.3% of customer account funds. Whoa, 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 what's up? This is one of the more controversial aspects of how Polonix dealt with it, or more specifically, Mr. Degusta. He decided to pay back customers two ways. One, using their own earnings, as in the Polonix exchange own earnings. And the rest, they decided to raise the fees from 0.2% up to 1.5% in trading fees in order to pay back the customers. <laughs> they charged all the customers more to pay back the customers that lost their money. No, oh, that's money that you took from another account. <laughs> I know. It's, it's a little bit. Also, notably, there is this Burns Wise LLP law firm that decided to look into some DDoS attacks that occurred in uh, May 8th, 2017, and potentially led to the, the loss of some customer funds because of some margin liquidations. The law firm followed up with Polonix and found no wrongdoing for any sort of lawsuit. On the contrary, they found that Polonix was actually privately recompensating them for their losses. So I personally recommend that it's always good just to wait until the first glitch or the first hack just to see how that exchange deals with that situation and how they grow from it. Again, you don't know how great they are until they're put through the paces. You understand what I'm saying? Now let's talk about the aesthetics. Now, the user interface for Poloniex, I would say, is arguably one of its strongest traits. What's wonderful about it is its simplicity. Normally, when you log on to a, a new exchange, you are bombarded with information. It's almost like going onto your email and then finding a whole bunch of shit everywhere. There's shit everywhere! Right off the bat, what's always made Poloniex stand aside from its competition is the fact that it's able to attract your attention to where it's needed most. And where it's needed most is all the trading features. Polonix is able to achieve this through its limited use of colors. If you haven't noticed already, Polonix uses a gradient of its green from its logo to illustrate the most important part, the exchange tab, the margin trading tab, and the lending tab. Otherwise, you'll find important things such as your balances, orders, settings, profile, and the night mode, which is dark mode, the markets tab, and the notices tab. The notices tab, just so you know, is the only place you'll ever really have to go to find out what's going on with the exchange. You won't have to sift through some long blog posts to just find out what's going on. And of course, there is the new TradingView integrated chart in the middle of the screen. That's awesome because you have a whole bunch of tools and you can use as many indicators as you want without having to pay for the TradingView application. What's also awesome is the fact that you can go to TradingView and log in through Polonix there too to make your trades. And notice that there isn't very many colors made available to you. What stands out to me the most is the buying, selling, and limit orders tabs at the bottom. Otherwise, the only most important part for me personally as a day trader is the percentage of change. And those are clearly indicated to me and they pop out at the corner of my eye every time. They're indicated by bright green or bright red as opposed to other exchanges that post like a bright pink, which I don't know what that means. And what I love a lot about the Polonix exchange is the feeling that I get that I get when I buy a crypto, man, or when I sell it. You get this little pop-up that says you just bought or you just sold something. It feels fucking great. They also use this awesome font I had never seen before called the Roboto font. The color that Polonix generally uses across their site is called 0A6970. And honestly, what's wonderful about that is it translates really well into dark mode. 
their background color and dark mode is just an off color green. I know dark mode is kind of common now and you see that everywhere. But to be entirely honest, when I jumped onto the Polonia X Exchange, it was one of the few places on the internet that even integrated dark mode. And what I really love about the dark mode is that I feel like I just jumped into the matrix. You know, take it easy on yourself. I mean, the dark mode is wonderful. It, it really is. It's, I would say, one of the best in class. Only two things I don't like is the fact that you cannot find your deposit and withdrawal history unless you go under your balances, then deposits and withdrawals, and there's you just don't know. If you deposit money into your account, you don't know how to figure out if it's getting there or not. So you have to scroll all the way down below all the currency. All the way down. And there's this little button that says, looking for your deposit and withdrawal history? Yes, I am. Why don't you just make a goddamn tab for it, man? And the only other criticism that I have about this is the fact that the maximum candlestick size is one day. I like seeing my monthly candlesticks. So does Polonix support forks, airdrops, or candies? Yet another controversial aspect of Polonix, because no. Aww. They kind of just don't. To be honest, they've supported some of the bigger forks for Bitcoin and Ethereum, but you know, you can't say that's gonna hold true for everything. Just remember, forks and candies are happening all the time, and when you hold a currency like EOS, I mean, there's candies and airdrops every single hour of the day, and you're not gonna get credit for them on the Polonix exchange. And that, I mean, I can't say that they won't credit you later, but currently, there is no reason to believe that they will be supporting anything. Now remember, if they are supporting any one of those three things, do not lend it or borrow it during the time of the fork, airdrop, or candy, or whatever. Because, as they say under terms and conditions, if you have any coin on loan at the time of the fork, you do not have it on balance, and therefore you cannot receive coins on the fork on the chain. And please make sure that uh, you do everything they ask in a timely manner, because there are deadlines, and if you don't meet the deadlines, you probably won't get your coins. So what currency selections and listing requirements do they have? Now, if you think Coinbase is like the coin boutique of coins, you know, I'd say Poloniex is right behind it with um, some other decent shit. And I know in the past Poloniex has listed some questionable. thought that it was going to take me to the moon but uh you know all right peak. if you are interested in looking at some of the old listings that they used to have because they've come quite a long way from then you could look on the Wayback machine and look at their old landing page and trust me it's a totally different beast back then man generally poloniex doesn't really list shit coins they do say that they seek organic demand and no security tokens and uh they do some howie testing and one of the more important facts is the fact that they actually request ID in order to do the coin listing from the development team. Now, I think this is important because there's some exchanges, some really low volume exchanges that don't even ask for that type of information. As far as deposit and withdrawal limits and fees and such, the minimum withdrawal limit's about $2 depending on where the market's at, but it stays around 2 for most currencies. And to me, one of the most interesting and coolest things about the withdrawals is the fact that Poloniex lets you withdraw EOS for free and deposit it for free. Also, there's no minimum withdrawal limit on something like EOS because there are some exchanges that the minimum withdrawal limit is about $100. And they do say something pretty important about unclaimed funds. To be honest, I would expect this of most exchanges, but it's important just to say it, just so you know. So again, if you look a little bit deeper into their terms and conditions, you will find that they say... <laughs> And again, this unclaimed property thing is actually pretty common. You can actually go on different websites and find that you have tons of unclaimed property. I mean, you can look up people like Kim Kardashian or even a Satoshi Nakamoto and see if they have unclaimed property. It's public record. Nani? So how do you get crypto on Poloniex? It's, uh, well, unfortunately, it's you can't buy crypto directly on Poloniex as you can so on Coinbase. It doesn't serve the same purpose currently. And my hope is that it will so yeah you have to buy your crypto from coinbase or avro or an atm or something like changely or even binance now that they're gonna accept 
debit card transactions and such. Uh, and then you transfer it over to Poloniex by sending your crypto there. Trading fees. They're not the best. They are about average, if not a little bit above average. As with most other exchanges, they use a 30-day trailing period in terms of your volume to see what tier you land in for your fees. Now, if you're under 500k in USD trading volume for the 30-day trading period, your fees are about 0.10% maker and above average 0.20% taker. And if you are landing on Poloniex, there is a 15% deduction from your interest. And currently there's no exchange token like you'll find on Huobi or Binance, you know, like the Binance token or the Huobi token. Margin trading. Oh, Satoshi, this is awesome. So I believe Poloniex does offer some of the best margin trading available. And it's not the highest. You can go to something like BitMEX or something like that. But it's really interesting because you get a diversified plate of currencies you don't really get elsewhere. And, you know, there are things like uh, Ripple, Ethereum, Litecoin, Monero, Clam. I mean, Clam, like, where do you ever see that? Stellar, Doge, Factum. I mean, come on, Factum? Uh, made, again, Made, BitShares, and Dash. Dash, man, that's awesome. What's pretty awesome too is the fact that you get to choose your fees, or not, not necessarily choose, but you get to propose what fee you're willing to pay for what period of time that you want. I mean, you could just choose what's available or you could just demand one entirely. But I'm sorry to the fellow cryptonauts in the United States. As of November 28th, 2018, this isn't available to you anymore because of regulatory shit. I know, it sucks. But let's talk about lending. I believe it's one of the coolest aspects of Poloniex to date. But again, unfortunately for those US residents, you can't participate in this anymore. There's very few exchanges that offer P2P lending in terms of crypto for you to trade with. And Poloniex is one of the few. You can lend rates as low as 0 0.0000, wait, three zeros, one, you know, 0 0.0001% up to 5%. And you could choose durations as low as two days up to 60 days. And what feels even greater is watching your money grow in real time. And that's, that's always feels pretty good. And also, please remember, if you're lending something, you don't get your money back until the person borrowing your money finishes their contract. That means that they close their position. So if you're expecting the world to come crumbling down on you because the crypto apocalypse is coming, bring it on! Oh, he's a river he's a then don't lend it out. And remember, in times of high turbulence, when there's a lot of trading going on and one coin is getting pumped, there's great opportunities to make money in this market. Say, for example, BitShares is getting pumped like 10,000%. First, all the loans that are made available from 0.0001% up to like 1% are going to be snapped up right away. Then eventually, people are going to be more willing to jump up to those even 5% loans. Um, so if you want to make some money, you could loan during turbulent times. And look, you're not going to become a crypto millionaire overnight from lending. You could earn a decent return over the year, but uh, day to day, month to month, this probably going to be enough to buy you like a Costco meal, like a hot dog and pizza from then time to time. Unless you're a whale, I do see them, you know, just if you want to, you could just if you're just going to be holding, hodling some coins and you don't want to really worry about the day to day trades and you're not in the US and you're able to participate in this market, you should loan out some of the cryptos that you have. If you have a couple thousand bit shares lying around, loan them out. If you have a couple thousand Litecoin, I mean, that's a lot of money though. So just, just be careful because there is also another inherent risk. Let's say the exchange goes defunct. They have no reason to pay you back from happening. So as you know, with margin trading, people get wrecked pretty quickly when a matter of minutes, you know, those traders do get margin calls and those margin calls are automatic. And fortunately, the exchange liquidates them to, in order to pay you back, including the fees that you deserve in time before you lose the money. But just remember, it's totally possible that at, at any given time, those margin calls may fall through and the market may fall down so quickly that you may even have to pay back some of the losses that the other customer might have lost. One of the things I want to cover is page speeds. If you think there's a, there's a better metric I can use, please let me know and I'll, I'll try it out. 
but I just want to see how quickly some pages load. And from what I found, Polonix is a little bit faster than its competitors. Even things like Binance and Huobi and stuff, some of those take really long to load. They have a lot of promotional material everywhere and it just kind of slows down the site. And I know it, it, de it depends on a lot of things. It depends on the customer demand at the time. As you know, in 2017, this might have taken a little bit longer. It depends on your internet speed, on your device, on even the software that you're using to access the internet. So for this test, I was using the latest Brave update on my Mac, and I used the Google Network Inspection Tool, and I decided to test two things, the Bitcoin versus Ethereum market page and the landing page. And what I found is that the login page averaged about 2.216 seconds to finish loading, and the Bitcoin versus Ethereum page averaged about 4.145 seconds to finish loading. And to be honest, other exchanges actually took twice as long to load. So customer service. I personally have not had any issues with customer service. They're generally pretty good about everything from what I've found. But I know a lot of people online are upset with them. But this is what they have to say with terms and conditions. Occasionally, you may get snagged by one of these customer people. Just remember, your job is to frustrate them and make them feel unwanted. Hell yeah, I suck toes. <laughs> good afternoon. Welcome to Pop Copy. Can I help you? Perfect. We try to respond to all legitimate requests within one month. Occasionally, it may take us longer than a month if your request is particularly complex, or if you have a number of requests. In this case, we will notify you and keep you updated. So in review, Poloniex really is an OG exchange. I mean, it's so OG that it's fallen behind, like all other OG exchanges, just because it doesn't meet all the new modern demands for the new crypto investor. It doesn't have all the cool trading promotions and doesn't offer all the support for the forks and the candies and the airdrops. To be honest, I don't know what exchange supports every single candy, airdrop, and fork. But look, when it comes to trading, you're trading. And you don't need distractions. All you need is the tools to make the right decisions. And I believe that Polonix offers you all the things that you need without any distractions. Their markets are generally liquid and their point selections are pretty good. And their margin trading and their margin lending, in my opinion, are top of the class. Well, of a very small class. And I know there's hundreds of exchanges you can choose from, but remember, sometimes what matters is looking at the things that have been tried and tested and have worked in the past. But don't get me wrong, Polonix still has tons to learn from and tons to keep up with. All the new modernized exchanges again are offering wonderful features and Polonix needs to keep up and offer some of those features. And again, they have said that they will plan to offer some new features that I believe we haven't even seen in other parts of the block space. Regardless of whether you're new or a veteran to the space, I still recommend if you haven't already to open up an account and just trade. I told you earlier in the video to stay tuned to the end. Well, this is the end. On April 8th, 2016, Whoses registered a new domain under the name Ophelix under the same registrar called NetEarth1. A little bit more research, we find that the SEC Form D, otherwise known as Exempt Offering of Securities, was filed on April 18th, 2016, just a couple days after the domain was registered. And the issuer was Ophelix Incorporated. Its executive officers and directors listed on the form are listed as Tristan De Agosta I, Julie Kim, and Michael Demopoulos. Unfortunately, the form does not really give us information to find out what Ophelix Incorporated is, but it does note it under other technology. And it does have rule 506 parentheses 6 marked off, meaning that only accredited investors are allowed to participate in this offering. So if you're accredited, look into it. I mean, Ophelia is really the daughter of Polonius, right? And I imagine that Ophelix is really only another word for Ophelia. What would Ophelix Incorporated really do? The following is only speculative and it's only something that I've thought about in the past couple days. But I think what Ophelix is probably going to be is some form of a crypto exchange or actually more of a blockchain asset exchange. And again, I'm going to look a little bit into Shakespeare's writing to get an idea of what's going on in Tristan de Augusta's head here. During the Hamlet play, Ophelia receives some gifts from Hamlet and Polonius goes through his strides to tell Ophelia that those gifts are not of genuine affection and he instructs her to return those gifts to Hamlet. My honored lord, you know right well you did and with them words of so sweet breath composed as made these things more rich than perfume left and take these again for two of the noble mind. Rich gifts wax and poor when givers prove unkind. <sighs> Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this Poloniex review. If there's anything you feel that I missed or I should have covered more or any other suggestions, 
please let me know with some comments or message me directly and I'll be more than happy to try to follow that up in the next review. And if you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing so you could just keep up with the things that I want to show you in the future. So remember, stay humble, stay safe, do your own research, and keep exploring. Kryptonaut, signing off.